Intel finally dropped their mobile Alder Lake chips in the form of the MSI Raider GE76, and it is impressive. So today, we're gonna take all that info that we got from this release today, all the benchmarks, the performance, and see how it stacks up to the M1 Max. Now this laptop isn't gonna hit the shelves for at least a month, so we are gonna have to wait to get our hands on it, but we have a ton of information that I sourced from Tech, we have Notebook Check, we also have Dave Lee's excellent channel. So let's go ahead and dig right in and see can this M1 Max hang in there with this big boy. Now as far as price, it comes in at $4,000. This is a 17 inch machine with a weight of six and a half pounds and it has a crazy cooling system and this Alder Lake chip needs it. Now, as far as the RAM, it has 32 gigs, just like the M1 Max that I tested, and it has two terabytes of SSD built in as well. And as far as the graphics, we have the 3080 Ti now. This is a laptop chip, crazy powerful, with 16 gigs of dedicated memory. That is about twice as fast as the other 30 series. So we're gonna see how this graphics card performs as well. Now, right out of the gate, I have to say that this this is not a multimedia laptop for general use. This is a brick of a gaming machine, and we know that because of its display. We have a 17-inch screen that is just 1080p compared to about 3.5K, and as far as brightness, it's only at about 260 nits. Very low brightness compared to a standard of 500, but up to 1600 nits for HDR color grading. And as far as the color accuracy, we see that it's only 61% DCI-P3, compared to almost 100 with the MacBook. So uh, it's not really for video editing, photo editing, things like that. And the SD card that is included, it's a really slow one at about 80 megabytes a second compared to 250. So we know that this is just purely for convenience, not a machine that you actually wanna be doing photo or video editing on. But as far as performance, with that Alder Lake, 12 900 HK processor that can hit up to five gigahertz. The performance is there. We have 14 cores in the CPU. Eight of them are now efficiency cores, just like the MacBook has, but the MacBook only has two. And then six are high performance, very high performance cores. Let's start out with Geekbench 5. And in the single core, the M1 Pro and Mac chip finally gets beat with a score of 1855 for the Intel processor. That that is insane single core performance. Now looking at multi-core, once again, it gets beat with a crazy high score of 13,428. That is higher than my Intel Mac Pro with 12 high performance cores that sucks down a crazy amount of power. So this is a very impressive performance. Now, taking this a step further, if you max out the CPU in Cinebench R23, we get an insane score of 18,282 compared to 12,300. That is mind blowing performance that destroys desktops. Good job, Intel, that is crazy. Now, in order to achieve this performance, one, we have this huge laptop with a crazy uh, cooling system. They're using a liquid metal pad that they say is 10% better than all of the other competition out there. They have this great cooling system and it actually has to cool up to about 120 watts of power to achieve over 18,000 score, whereas our M1 Max processor and the M1 Pro for its performance cores, uh, well, total CPU is about 30 watts, so a lot less wattage. Now, because of that, of course, you're gonna have fan noise. The MacBook Pro, even under full load, is under 30 decibels. Very quiet, of course, the chassis is thin, whereas this MSI runs at 59 decibels, and it also runs really hot, so that is quite loud, very, very loud. Now Dave Lee also tested out the balance mode and then that brought it down to 42 decibels, still way louder. Um, and that actually knocks the wattage down to about 75 watts from 120. Now I do have to still give Intel praise because here the performance didn't actually get that much lower. We're at 16,597, still smoking the M1 Pro and the M1 Max processor. So very good there. Now what I'm really curious 
about are the lower end CPUs, the i5s, the ones that have less cores that are gonna go into laptops like the new Dell XPSs. Uh, basically how these chips, these Alder Lake chips are gonna perform in laptops that are actually as thin and as light as the MacBook Pro. So if you guys wanna see that, you guys wanna see head to head comparisons with a lot of real world tasks, not just benchmarks, make sure you guys click that subscribe button down below. And with that, you guys can help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers. And now let's talk about the graphics card. We have that 3080 Ti, very high performance one packed into the system. And this thing can actually use up to 175 watts of power compared to the M1 Max's uh, 32 cores, which use up to 46 peak. Now that is a huge difference in wattage, uh, but we also have a difference in performance. Using the cross-platform GFX bench, we see that this graphics card hits 327.7 FPS in the Aztec Ruins 1440p off screen compared to 310. Not a really big difference there compared to the difference in wattage and fan noise. Now, of course, this program is optimized for Apple's silicon chips and also for metal. So this is the most fair comparison, but if you're gonna be a gaming, there's very little games that run well with Apple Silicon and running on uh, metal as well. So definitely a much better gaming system. Now, as far as other tests, Dave Lee tested out uh, Blender's EV Party Tug, and that took 3.6 seconds compared to 5.9. So not really double the performance, but it's getting close there. Now, per personally, I wanna use the new Metal Optimized Cycles and also the optimized version for Windows. And then once we get these machines, we will be testing out, giving you guys more tests instead of just this simple one that's running off the EV engine. Now, I also looked at Speedometer 2.0, which is their general web browsing performance. The M1 Mote Pros and Macs score 277. It's an extremely high score. These machines are amazing for web browsing, super snappy. And this thing got 269. 9 FPS right there along with Apple systems. Incredible performance, much faster than any other Windows system in the past. I also have the SSD test over here and that uses two SSDs. You get two terabytes um, instead of one terabyte. Of course, that system is 500 bucks more. So you could spend the extra to get two terabytes in a similar price point. But as far as the read speed, it is very close, uh, just behind the MacBook and write is quite a bit slower. Apple's SSDs are very, very quick, but of course they are soldered on. Now we also have a Puget Bench and a video editing test with um, Premiere Pro. Dave Lee ran it and this Alder Lake system did beat out the MacBook. We're at just over 14 minutes compared to just over 18. Now, of course, Premiere Pro isn't the best optimized. I personally am really curious about DaVinci Resolve. And that is something that we are gonna have to test once we get it. But he also ran Puget Bench's overall benchmark. It doesn't just look at rendering times, but also playback performance. A lot of that with different codecs and the M1 Max still beats that out because of Apple's uh, decoders and encoders that are built in that makes everything very efficient and very smooth. And that is in Premiere Pro. Now let's go ahead and talk about battery life. This is the elephant in the room. Now this laptop does have a 99.9 .9 watt hour battery, the biggest you can get in order to still be able to legally fly with this laptop. So very big battery, a lot of Windows laptops have 80 watts or 65, much smaller ones. But even still, and even with these efficiency cores, the MacBook still kills it in terms of battery life. So for simple web browsing use, and this is in the balance mode, you can get about six hours of web browsing with that laptop. Um, not great, not terrible, it is an improvement compared to about 14 hours with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now, as far as video playback, you get about four and a half hours of video playback um, compared to about 20 on the MacBook. So very, very efficient. Apple's uh, decoding engine barely uses any power. And then as far as video rendering, if you're doing some serious stuff, you will get about two hours with this GE76 Raider with Alder Lake compared to about seven hours with the MacBook. Now, if you don't put in the balance mode for simple use, you, you will get about three hours still. So make sure you put into the balance mode that limits the 
wattage in the turbo boost. Now, another big improvement with these systems that Enantec talked about uh, was Intel's Thread Director. It's a new kind of technology that automatically uh, prioritizes certain workloads and balances the system out. Apple MacBooks have been using this for a long time. I noticed it years ago when I would be exporting a video and then I could still use the web browser. It wouldn't lock up like my custom water-cooled Windows PC that had a lot better performance. So with these new chips, it will actually uh, give you a little bit of that performance. It'll cut back on rendering, for example, so you can still use the system, still use web browsing and simple tasks without it being all slow and glitchy. And that is a major win for general usability with these laptops. So overall, we see, at least in this first laptop, this big boy, that the performance of these CPUs are incredible. Intel has done a great job. They improve their efficiency. So thank you to Apple for pushing Intel. Thank you for to AMD for pushing Intel, bringing more competition back to get Intel back on their game and creating better products for all of us, the consumers. Now, we are gonna be getting a Razer laptop with both an i5 version of this in a 15-inch size and also the i9. Uh, we'll see how these perform in chassis that are similar to the MacBook Pro and in real world workloads such as photo editing, we'll have Photoshop, DaVinci, um, we'll have DaVinci Resolve for video editing and a lot more tasks if you guys want to see that. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button above if you want to see that. Check out one of those two great videos right over there. This is Max and I'll see you in the next video.